Hi everyone, this is William Fields, and today I'm going to show you how I make music, basically. Um, I do not do live coding. Um, I have a sort of live performance system or instrument that I use. Um, and today I'm going to give you a, an overview of how that works, and then at the end I'll do a little demonstration a little improvisation. So, first of all, uh, it's all controlled by Lemur running on the uh, iPad, as you can see here. So Lemur lets you kind of create your own uh, user interface uh, with different controls and tabs and buttons and sliders and so forth. And this is an interface that I've been working on for years now and kind of refining uh, over time. <clears throat> And so I have multiple tabs here, um, which I'll walk you through one at a time. Um, so first of all, this is kind of the drums tab, uh, where I have four step sequencers, uh, basically is what they are. Um, and let me go over here and hit play. So <clears throat> these are basically step sequencers, except instead of having just a pure on and off switch, uh, these are, each step is a slider. So this top one is the, uh, the bass drum, and the slider controls the probability of having a hit at that step, and also the velocity or volume of that hit. So if I uh, put these uh, down to like halfway, so, so this first one is always going to hit, and then the others will only hit half half of the time, fifty percent of the time, and they'll be about fifty percent quieter. Um, so that allows you to kind of quickly draw in probabilistic patterns that um, that you know change every time. It's not it's not going to be the same every time, but it'll be pretty similar. And the it, I could have had a separate, um, a separate column, or sorry, a separate row for velocity. But in order to save space and keep it compact, I decided to kind of integrate the two. And it, I think it works pretty well um, to put it together like that because a lot of times the hits that are uh, less important. Um, are also a little quieter. Um, so it just, it, it works out nicely. Um, so there's a couple other things here to show you. So this top one, the blue one, is the uh, the bass drum, as I said. Um, you see it says 4x and 16 step. So I can control, I'll just turn these off. So right now it's 16 steps, but I can change the number of steps so to anything you know, one through 16. So now it's, you know, it's just stepping three steps, four steps. So you can have, uh, you know, loops of different lengths. So that's an 11 step. And then in addition, there's a multiplier of the pulse here. So that it's currently at 4x, but I could put it that's kind of the default, but um, I can change it to, um, you know, anything. So now it's 8x, you know, all the way up to 16x. Let me just make this, uh, oops. So that's 16x, 4x, you know, 1x is just slow. So, right, so for each step sequencer, there's the multiple of the pulse and there's the number of steps. Um, these little buttons over here just let me quickly uh, quickly jump to different multi multiples that are more common, like three and six and four and eight. Uh, but I could also dial in like five or whatever here. Uh, and then the X, the X buttons reset. Um, 
<laughs> and finally, um, I'll come back to the lock thing later, but I also have this little, these little sliders here. Oops. This is a, a delay. Uh, oh, and these little triangle buttons are like the reset. They, they reset the, um, multiplier. You'll see that all throughout the system. I have these little uh, reset buttons to quickly get back to normal. Uh, but yeah, this is a little delay thing, which allows you to kind of dial in a groove. Um, so I'll show you, in order to show you that, I have to, I'll draw in a more of a, a beat here. So again, the top one is the bass drum. This is hi-hats. Oh, yeah, the other nice thing is I can just quickly like swipe to put in a, uh, values. Uh, so I'll just uh, do something kind of straightforward like that just to demonstrate. So if I have these delays all the way down that means everything is aligned. Actually let me do it with just a bass drum and a snare. Let's do that. Okay, so everything is hitting together at the exact same time. But if I turn up this for the snare, you can hear the snare is a little late now. So it kind of gives like a swing kind of thing. Well, it's not really swing. It's just delaying the snare by a fixed amount. Uh, and I can do the same for the hi-hat and the bass drum. Each element can have its own, so you can kind of dial in a groove. So like if I delay everything but but not the hi-hat, it makes it sound like the hi-hat is early. So you can probably hear that. Right, but now if I change it all back to straight, no delay again. Now it's, you know, now it's just a straight rhythm. But uh, this, you can um, find some pretty nice grooves this way just by adjusting these things. Okay, so I'll reset this. Um, okay, so what, to explain the lock thing, it actually does a couple things, but let's look at this. Um, so make a little hi-hat line here. But right now it's, like I explained before, it's not playing these as frequently because the the probability is, is lowered. But if I hit lock, it will ignore the probability part and it will always play the note, but it'll play it at a lower volume. Because sometimes I wanna have like a pattern like this, like where it's surging in volume like that. Um, and in that case, I would hit lock. Um, one thing that's kind of nice is to make a pattern like this and then make it one step shorter than everything else. So the 15 step and then make this like a regular beat. Because then it kind of shifts, shifts against everything else. So you, you add all this up together um, and it's really powerful because you can, you know, you can quickly do you know, polyrhythmic stuff, like I'll make patterns of different lengths. Uh, and I could, uh, you know, speed it up a little bit. Or set like triplets. Or, uh, Or do every like every five get some weird stuff. Okay, so in the interest of time, um, I'll wrap. That's the uh, the kind of drums tabs. That's really like the heart of the whole thing. Um, I have a bass tab which is very similar, similar setup here. Um, but in addition to the notes, it works the same way with the probabilities and the multipliers and all that stuff. Um, I also have, 
I can draw in the notes. So, so this is the note for the for this hit, and this is the note for this hit. It's just a couple of octaves, uh, I guess, one of four octaves or something like that, three maybe. Uh, but it's enough for what I need for the for the bass. Um, I also have a kind of a, an LFO thing here, which maybe I'll come back to if I have time. Um, so yeah, you can draw in the bass in a similar way. Um, so, yeah. So you get the idea. You can quickly draw in, draw in sequences. Do like a or if you want to change it to more of like a rising pattern and um, the actual notes uh, the actual notes that I draw in there don't matter too much because I have a, um, a kind of snap to scale thing going it's, I think it's turned off right now, but I can select over here, I can select uh, a scale like, I don't know, D, uh, D minor or something, but you see I have a bunch of different options. It's a D minor. And now whatever I, uh, oops, whatever I draw in here, it'll always be in D minor. Uh, so I don't have to be careful about what I do there. I can just quickly put stuff in. Um, all right. Oop. All right. I need to. I'm running out of time. I see. So, because there's a lot more to cover on the performance tab, this is kind of the main tab. There's a lot of stuff on here, as you can see. Um, the there's a lot of controls here, but what I'm controlling is con determined by what's selected down here. So I have kind of selector buttons for each of the uh, drum elements. Um, the EXT I'm not using at the moment, just for like external stuff. Um, the responder, which I'll explain later, keys and the bass. So depending on what I have selected here, it will control those elements. So for example, I'll just draw in another, uh, draw in another rhythm or something, whatever, doesn't matter what it is. Okay, now over here, if I just want to control the bass drum, then I select the bass drum, the BD. Well, let's control the bass drum and the snare only. So I can control the, the decay. So that's the decay slider. It will only control the decay of the selected elements there. So if I can bring it down real small, for example, or attack, is the attack decay. All the other stuff is left untouched. Actually, I'll draw a bass, bass in there too. So since I'm only selecting bass and snare, those are the things that are being controlled. But I could select everything. And now I'm controlling the attack and the decay of everything at the same time. And these buttons reset it. So you see I can bring that down for everything at once or open it all up. And then just reset it. Uh, and this over here just clears everything. So if I need to quickly clear everything. Um, and I also have um, a bunch of other controls, multiplier. This is kind of a global thing that controls the multiplier for everything at once. So you can see over here now, they're all 1x, at least the drums I mean. Draw 1x, but if I increase it to like 8, now everything's 8x. So it's just kind of a global multiplier control. Um, and the same thing for loop length. So I set everything to a loop length of 3, then reset it again. I have like a randomness thing that just adds, uh, adds random variations. 
or like double time variations if I do 2x. Um, uh, these buttons do little fills at whatever multiplier it is. So if I hit four, it increases the density. Increases the density up to, the density just kind of like adds extra notes at whatever multiplier it's playing at. Um, so if I hold the button, it quickly changes the multiplier to another value and adds a bunch of uh, kind of fill which is cool with, especially with like triplets and stuff. Okay, um, also I have pitch and filter envelopes for each element. So if I change just the first one, it again, it depends on what I have selected down here, but here I'm pitching down all the drums together or, or all up together. So this is the start of the pitch envelope, and this is the end of the pitch envelope. And this is how fast it goes from start to end. So you can really hear it if I open up the decay. Like this. But, you know, again, it's can be individual. So if I, I can leave everything else alone and just change the snare. And, uh, same with the filter, start filter, end filter, and how fast it gets there, the, how fast the envelope is. So you can hear the filter going from like a low pass to a high pass or vice versa. Um, the mod control is, um, oh, let me reset this stuff. The mod is kind of like opens up the filters and for the drums, it picks a different sound. It kind of fades. So there's two different sets of drum sounds and I can like kind of fade between them with this. And with the bass, you can hear it like opening up. So, um, yeah, if you control that, uh, Combine that with the filter and the pitch, you can get a lot of variety in the sounds. Like, if I do like, like pretty quickly. normal bring the decay down a little bit so micro kind of adds these micro rhythms which you can hear like if I turn it up actually I'll just do it on the drums so any notes that are below the velocity uh, represented by this slider will will get that kind of roll um, so I turn it so if I turn it all the way up, everything will get that. Okay. Um, octave is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, doesn't affect the drums, just affects the melodic elements. I have a feedback thing here, which is a feedback uh, loop within the system, and this controls the the time of the feedback loop. So you can see and that resets it. Okay, so then I have this record button, which lets me record um, basically my motions um, and then loop them back. So if I hit record here and like make some changes, and then hit it again. Now it'll do it automatically, what I just did. Uh, 
And then if I want it, if I want it to stop doing that, then I can just just touch it, and now it'll will stop doing the looping what I did. Um, these are just reset buttons. So if I want to like clear the bass quickly or clear the drums quickly, I can do so. I just swipe and then do clear everything at once. Um, all right. Oh god, I'm really running out of time. So let me just draw something in here again. Okay, over here is kind of the effects chain um, where I have kind of two chains. Um, this is, this one has, um, it's kind of like sine wave follower. So it'll like kind of turn everything into a sine wave. This is a, um, this is a spectral effects thing that has all these different kind of presets. And this, is, this controls how much. And this controls the mode. So if I put, oh, I, I like that, it's 16. It's kind of like a warbly thing. Okay, and then I have kind of sends. So this determines if each element goes to the, the bottom effects chain or the top one or a mix. So if I push this up, the drums, it says ambience, but that I need to fix that. That's not really what it is. So now it's also going to this top chain, which has reverb on it. And it also has its own separate spectral um, effects thing. So I have two different spectral effects one on this chain, chain and one on this chain. Um, and I can say like control each element. I put the bass up here. Um, I put the bass up there. So now the bass is going through the top and the drums are going through the bottom chain. Um, and I also have other effects like this kind of, it's like granulator, stereo thing, reverb. This controls the duck of how much the drums cause the reverb to duck. Or chicken. So. So these are, again, these are kind of the effect sends, which chain it goes through, and then I have the top chain and the bottom chain. Uh, you can also take the top chain and route it, whoa, route it through the entire thing through the top chain if you want to like have everything processed through all the effects together. All right, over here I have uh, kind of ran out of room, so I put the, this is kind of like the swing part. Um, jitter kind of makes it just randomly distributes it just adds like random delay to everything. It makes it all crazy. So you get the idea there. Um, let me just, just do a simple thing. And then I have swing here, so you can hear it. So you can hear it swing. And I have different granularities for the swing, which does different stuff. And one thing I added, uh, the straight button just like resets everything. So boom, it'll just make everything a straight rhythm, even the groove stuff that I showed you earlier. Um, and then I have this new thing, Rubato mode, which if you listen to the, um, like listen to the hi-hats, you can probably hear it, but, and that causes it to like speed up and slow down. which is uh, pretty fun. Okay, and I didn't even get over here um, yet. So this is the, I have kind of a keyboard sound. I call it keys with this generator. Well, actually, first of all, this is a little, this is a little manual keyboard. So if I want to play something, I can. And I have a looper for that, so. Um, So now it'll play back what I just did. Okay, but let's clear that. 
And then I also have this generative thing down here, which just kind of, um, let me turn up the keys. So this, um, the two elements, one controls the note selection and one controls like the rhythm or the timing of the notes. And I can have, also have length and multipliers for that. So this is how many notes, and this is the multiple multiplier, just like with the drums. So, so you can get a lot of variety with just these few controls. Um, and quickly back to the bass, I can have the bass follow the notes of the keys. So if I turn that on, that's pretty nice. I like that. Um, so I think you get the idea there. I'll just clear that. Oh, that's why is that? I need to fix that. Um, okay, and then this finally, this is a responder, which um, is kind of like another synth that's triggered by other elements. So I can set it to be triggered by any of the um, the keys or any of the drum elements or by its own internal sequencer. So I sit like bass drum, and then this is the note source, either generative or I can get the notes from whatever the keys are playing. I'll just put generative. Um, and uh, let's see, make sure this is on. There we go. So, so that's the, uh, you can hear it there. But, so every time there's a bass drum, it's gonna trigger that. So you can hear that. And I can have that play chords also. Like that. Okay, so I'll just turn that off. Uh, and finally, I have a mixer page here where I can control the volume of each element individually. Um, and uh, mute stuff or reset it. Uh, yeah. And the play, this controls tempo. Uh, I can also do tap tempo there if I want to. Um, and finally, there's a kind of generative aspect to this, which um, you may know of from my Fields OS stuff. Uh, that's, that's a whole other thing I don't have time to go into, but what I can do is hit this uh, gen new, and it will basically randomize all the controls for this whole system based on different algorithms and give me new music to work with. Um, or, or basically find new um, kind of possibilities within the system. So I'll just show you what that does. Um, hit play. And I'm just going to hit this, or I can hit init to reset everything, which is handy, of course. Uh, but I'll hit gen new. Okay, so that sounds like the uh, footwork algorithm came up. So basically, some are better than others, obviously. Uh, but usually my process is that, that I... Uh, my process is that I kind of keep hitting that button and save really like good ones um, that have a lot of potential. And then I'll come back and I can load them later and perform with it. So maybe what I'll do right now is just... Um, I'll find, I'll use this to find something and do a quick little performance with it. Let's see. All right. So why don't we try with that? It's a decent starting point. Turn down the reverb real quick. Okay, so let's see what I can 
do with that. Uh, so, but I'll start with this stuff turned down. Let's see. few more things that I didn't get a chance to show you, um, but I think that should give you a pretty good idea of what's going on. Um, yeah, so it's really fun to play with. Uh, basically, I can just sit down, as you can see, and just immediately make music and record it. And that's really my process, is that I just practice with this thing, I perform with it, I record the results. And uh, the performances that turn out really well, uh, which is a small percentage, but um, those are the ones that I end up uh, releasing. And that's, that's pretty much my, my whole process is uh, using this thing. So I uh, hope that was helpful, inspiring. Um, feel free to reach out to me uh, online on social media. You know, I'm on Twitter at William Z. It's William Fields with a Y at the end. Uh, same with Instagram. Um, please get in touch. I'd be happy to answer any questions. And uh, yeah, I hope this was useful. Thank you. Bye.